So inflammation is a state in the body that is created uh, when we have, for example, an infection or um, our skin is wounded or um, we have a, a bad cold. So every time that there is a, a virus or a bacteria in the body and then the immune system, which is basically the cells that are circulating in our body, what we call the white blood cells, defend ourselves from virus and bacteria, they get activated and they create a state of inflammation. So as part of the normal stress response, so if, you, um, if you're having a really bad uh, life event, for example, uh, your immune system gets activated. And this is probably um, a biological response that our body does because, of course, in the past, all stressors were quite physical. Um, you know, it would, you would have to fight or uh, there would be a predators. And so you, in response to stress, the immune system gets activated. Even if today we don't need that anymore because of all stressors are psychosocial. So the, the stress activates the immune system and then the immune system makes the brain more vulnerable. Uh, it changed the way the brain function, uh, some of the way the brain cells communicate between themselves, for example, there are substances that we call transmitters that we know are very important for depression and the inflammation will change these substances in the brain and make the brain more vulnerable to develop depression. So, in terms of physical health, um, if you have a chronic inflammation, you have more risk of developing cardiovascular disorder, uh, so for example having heart problem or risk of having uh, diabetes uh, or so high glucose in the, in the, in the blood or uh, having metabolic disorder, obesity or increased weight. So it has an effect across all physical, all aspects of physical health. And you know, with mental health, because it makes the brain more vulnerable to depression, it basically increases the risk that if something happens later, so let's say you have another life event or a bad stress, you develop depression. So, uh, antenatal depression has a, has, a, has a lot of consequences on the offspring, uh, which are actually almost more powerful than the consequence of postnatal depression. We always think about postnatal depression because of course that's when the mother and the baby communicate and if the mother is depressed, the communication is not as good as you, you wish. Uh, but antenatal depression, so when the mother is depressed and the baby is in utero, is also as important, even more important, because that's a time where the babies and the mothers are in direct biological communication. There's literally exchange of blood and substances and that creates the development of the baby, creates a, it shapes the development of the baby, including the baby's stress response and the baby's brain. So we know, for example, that if a mother is depressed in pregnancy, the, the, the baby and then the child, when it becomes a child, will be more likely to have emotional disorders, uh, it could have more hyperactivity or tension deficit, and then when it becomes adolescent, it could be more at risk of having uh, depression or um, what we call externalizing behavior. So, for example, disruptive or difficult behavior. And later in life, we know that actually, even when you become young adult, uh, those born from mother who are depressed in pregnancy are more at risk of developing depression. So it's really a long-term effect. That's why we think it's so important to intervene early and to treat depression in pregnancy and also accept that actually uh, women who are depressed in pregnancy should not feel stigmatized and should, and should seek help and receive help. So one of the um, one of the most recent um, evidence coming from research is showing, and this has been replicated in many studies, is showing that children born from mothers who are depressed in pregnancy are more likely to be exposed to life event, difficult life events or difficult life circumstances later in life. I mean, some of it is probably because uh, the mothers also live in difficult circumstances, so the babies also live in difficult circumstances. And, but also some of it may be because 
the baby may, because of the, the mother was depressed in pregnancy, the baby's development in utero uh, creates a risk of um, emotional disorders or behavioral disorders, so the baby is more difficult and the child is more difficult, and so it may be mal maltreated because it creates conditions that are adverse. I think we need to, first of all, we need to inform mothers about depression in pregnancy, um, make sure the mothers don't feel uh, stigmatized or punished uh, because they should be happy and they feel that they can seek help. And then there needs to be a system to help them with psychological intervention or even if needed with um, antidepressants and other pharmacological intervention, of course only the more severe cases. So we need doctors that are um, able to prescribe under this condition and, and they, are, you know, they are aware of the most important development in perinatal psychiatry.